Humankind has called some crazy stuff food over the years. Different continents, cultures, and eras have different sets of things we consider regular old food. Food history is one of the big new areas of history research. Today, let's talk about garum, a strange fish sauce that took the Roman world by storm. How it was made, how popular was it, why we stopped eating it, and why it might just make a comeback. And I teamed up with Professor Elliot, who actually made and ate the stuff. Yum. I'm Tristan Johnson, and this is Step Back History. Garum is a food that has origins all the way back to ancient Greece. However, the first document we have about the process of making garum comes from an astrology book of all things in the first century CE. Fishermen would process their fish and place the blood and guts in a container with some salt. This concoction needed to ferment in the sun for several months. Simple as that, you have garum. While garum worked as an umbrella term, there were a variety of byproducts and qualities of the stuff. The sediment left behind in the fermentation process goes by the name alec, a sort of fish paste, and the brine left behind was called muria. Garum itself was pretty pricey at its peak and was often diluted with wine, honey, vinegar, water, and or herbs. There was even a cheap method used to make it by boiling fish in a strong brine and draining the liquid. There was a wide variety of the stuff. The fish used for garum mattered quite a bit in what its quality would be. The Romans considered tuna the top fish, the Grey Poupon fish, if you will. Though mackerel was also considered a top-notch garum fish. There was also a variant where tiny fish that they normally just threw out would go in a garum pot hole. It seems in different places, different fish and different parts of fish made up the garum, and scholars aren't sure what was the proper way to make it if there was one. The stuff apparently has quite a smell to it, but there was no rotten fish in garum. They fermented it like sauerkraut or beer. Because there's so much salt, there's no bacteria or other microbes putrefying the fish parts. Garum needed fish guts because the fermentation occurred with the help of enzymes that came from them. The sun then adds energy and helps the process along, and the salt pickles everything. This fermentation process released a lot of the protein from the fish, and so garum was quite nutritious. Because of this process, you wanted as little bacteria in there as possible from fish handling, so often the places where garum was made would be close to the sea. Garum was an integral part of Roman cuisine. One surviving Roman recipe book had garum as an ingredient in nearly 350 of its dishes. Scholars and journalists refer to it as the ketchup of its day, and the Roman poet Marshall wrote an epigraph about the stuff. It was also pretty expensive. It cost about 500 US dollars today, but was found in pretty much any Roman kitchen. There was fancy garum only the super wealthy could afford, the champagne of garum, if you will, and if there's a champagne of garum, you can bet that there was the box of pink Zinfandel garum even slaves could budget. The stuff even had medical applications. They considered it a ungulate in healing for both humans and animals. They used it for scabies and their sheep, as an antidote for dog and crocodile bites, a salve for birds and ulcers, or as a laxative. Massive installations for making garum were found all around the Iberian coast, especially near the Strait of Gibraltar, where huge schools of tuna cross from the Mediterranean to the Atlantic. Other factories have turned up around Southern Europe and in North Africa. Another place famous for its garum was Pompeii. Yeah, that place where a volcano buried a city and the 12th doctor got his face. Bones discovered in a garum factory in Pompeii help find a more precise date for the eruption that buried them. So why isn't garum a staple of every kitchen today? Well, it has to do with salt. Salt was cheap in the Roman Empire, but once it collapsed, different rulers started to tax it. The price increase made garum difficult to produce. In the wake of the Roman collapse, you also had a surge in Mediterranean pirates. These pirates often raided coastal cities where all the garum was made. So after the Roman Empire, it pretty much disappeared, but not entirely. A few pockets in Southwest Italy continued making it. Today, they make a sauce called Colatura di Ladici, which traces its origins to garum. It was super obscure, most Italians didn't even know about it, but it's slowly coming back. Many high-end restaurants are starting to buy it as a secret ingredient for their dishes. It's apparently really, really good, and has a powerful umami flavor every testimonial about it online says is remarkable. Chefs are considering it a long-lost missing link in Italian cuisine. Some even call it the great-grandfather of Worcestershire sauce, one of my favorites. A fish sauce which comes 
comes from Southeast Asia is also rather common and is becoming popular around the world. Their sauce is made in a similar fashion to garam and can be found in most Asian grocery stores. So the long lost Roman ketchup might be due for a comeback. So leave a comment below if you would wanna try this stuff. If you wanna see somebody eat the fermented fish, Professor Elliot actually made and tried this stuff over on his channel. It's part of an amusing series called Fantastic Feasts and Where to Find Them, in which they try all sorts of strange foods from around the world and back in time. I should have a clicky thing to go watch him give Roman style garum a try. If you like this video, maybe you should stick around for a few more. The subscribe button will keep you up to date on the newest Step Back videos, and with the bell notification, you can get a update whenever a new video comes out. And if you like this, do me a favor and share it with some other of your friends on social media. The channel grows with word of mouth. Speaking of people who are making Step Back possible, I'd like to thank these wonderful people, as well as Don and Carrie Johnson for their support on Patreon. Also. Thank you, Professor Elliot, for eating garum so I don't have to. Thanks for watching, and come back next week for another Step Back.